a lady went into a very busy butcher shop. She saw dozens of dressed chicken hanging there. She went there, lifted a leg and smelled, lifted another leg and smelled, lifted a wing and smelled. Like this she went on from chicken to chicken. Then the butcher came and tapped her on the shoulder and said, Ma'am, could you pass a test like that? <laughs> you won't. So don't go about smelling around, what's wrong with this guy, what's wrong with her, what's wrong with him, what's wrong with her, what's wrong with him. All of them stink a bit. <laughs> yes, every tree, every plant, in some way rooted in filth. But the question is only, does it throw out a fragrant blossom? That's all the question is. If the roots are bloody clean, it will not throw out anything wonderful. Are we in the process of transformation? Because this is the nature of life. Are we a continuous process of transformation? Because everything is. Everything else on the planet is in the process of transformation. Are you a process of transformation? That's a big question. If you are a big yes to this one question, nothing else matters. If you are a stagnant pool, getting entangled in this and that every day and finding devious reasons as to why you are entangled, then you are a hopeless case. You are a waste of time on this planet. When I say waste of time, I'm saying a wasted life because your life is just time. Some other creature could have lived. A grasshopper would have hopped around with more joy than a devious human being. <laughs> yes or no? We could make a million grasshoppers or butterflies out of you <laughs> for the same body weight. <laughs> yes or no? <laughs> If you are not capable of something better than every other creature, we have no business because we are a bloody expensive life. Yes or no? We are a very expensive life, expensive in every way. To eat, sleep, to walk, how many arrangements we need? Yes or no? from footwear to clothes to buildings to how many arrangements? I don't see a kitchen anywhere in the forest, <laughs> but they're all well fed. Hmm? Now did you see the elephant walking with shoes? <laughs> Very expensive life. For so much expense, this must do something better than every other creature can do. We as a species, as a human race, have done many terrible things, many wonderful things also. But for every wonderful thing we do, we have at least one terrible thing to show, if not more. Spiritual process means just this, that every day you keep subtracting your terrible things. A terrible thought, a terrible emotion, a terrible word, a terrible action, every day, one a day, you'll be doing great in a month or two. Am I underestimating you? <laughs> that I believe you have only thirty terrible things <laughs> The 
the most terrible thing about human beings is that they are so busy with their own stuff, they don't feel the pain and suffering and what other life is going through. Not sensitive. Not being sensitive is the most terrible crime because if we were sensitive, not ego sensitive, life sensitive, if we were life sensitive, everything that we can do, we would anyway do. What we cannot do, what to do? We can't do, that's all. But what we can do would happen. A Sudanese man, you know Sudan? There are two, you know. Hello? Yes. There are two Sudans. The Sudanese people, it is said, I'm not an expert on this, it is said most of the Sudanese people are of Indian origin. They still eat dosa. <laughs> they have very similar culture, they look very much like Indians. Mixed up with North African population, but they've gone there a few millennia ago. So a Sudanese man <coughs> went to Morocco, to camel market in Marrakesh, a very famous camel market. There's one in Rajasthan in Pushkar. So, he went to sell his camel. Then he found all the camels that were in the market were much bigger than his camel. So he looked around, every camel was bigger than his. Then he asked the Berber men, Berber is a tribe, the word barbarian comes from this tribe. The Berber man who was sitting with his large camels, he asked, how come your camels are so big and mine barely half the size? He said, it's very simple, I see you camel, it's not castrated. If you castrate your camel, it'll grow big. He asked, how do I do this? He said, it's very simple. Take two bricks and smash the testicles of the camel and after that it'll grow very big. Won't it hurt? He asked. He said, not at all, I'll show you. And he brought one camel, took two bricks and smashed it. The camel screamed in pain and ran. This Sudanese guy asked, but you said it won't hurt. Well, it only hurts if you get your finger between the bricks. <laughs> You're very sensitive to what happens to you, barely sensitive to what happens to everything else. In this condition, the most wonderful nature of the human being will not find expression. You have to become sensitive. You must understand the tree, the flower, the birds and all creatures are very sensitive to everything that's happening around them. They won't go and hurt anything unless they need to eat. Yes? Unless it's their food. They never went about simply killing. Because they're very sensitive to life. Not in the way you understand, not as an emotion, but simply sensitive to life. Never did this tree branch come down and knock any of you down during a darshan. <laughs> Be careful. <laughs> Either it's for food or in self-defense, otherwise no animal is simply going on. So human beings, 
I have to show little evolution, you know. Hmm? We have to show little evolution, little more evolution than the other creatures which are on the force. At least like our nearest of the, you know, our nearest relatives, at least that much. <laughs> yes, I know, in the world there is competition for resource, there is competition for everything and some friction will happen here and there. I am not innocent of those things. But I want you to at least eliminate the friction that happens within you, though you have nothing to gain. Is it happening or no? Simply, you smelling every chicken, but you yourself won't pass the test <laughs>